Hey, Tactical Painter, back out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop. Welcome to Shop Talk Tuesday. This is the second episode of Shop Talk Tuesday. I got uh, good reviews last week from you guys on our first Shop Talk Tuesday. And I threw at the end a little card, asked you know, if you guys wanted to see more of these. And I got 100% yes. So I'm going to continue doing these. I'll get these out every Tuesday that I possibly can. And we will get these going for you. So, today on Out in the Shop, we're going to be talking about just some general stuff and I'm gonna try and keep it short because it is bloody cold out here let me tell you uh, we're looking at 26 degrees it's gonna get down to tonight it's snowing out right now which is awesome and it's it's gonna be a lot of fun so um, I don't know if, you know everybody is from around here but uh, in Oregon when we get snow we get ice and when we get ice Things get a little crazy. They only just figured out last year that, uh, hey, if you put salt on the roads, it does wonderful things to get rid of ice. For the longest time, they're like, no salt. We don't want any salt. We don't want any of that stuff. No salt. And a couple years ago, we had so much ice that they couldn't contain it. Things went nuts, and the entire city shut down for about nine hours, and it was entertaining. Of course, people from around the country are going, you guys are crazy. What's your problem? But we get ice so seldom that we don't actually don't have a whole lot of equipment. We had to bring stuff down from Seattle in order to help deal with our ice down here. And they brought down some serious pieces of equipment that did an awesome job. So thank you guys so much up in Seattle. Uh, anybody, you know, viewing from up there, we appreciated that two years ago when, um, well, our city failed us. <laughs> All right. So out here in the shop, got a nice cup of hot cocoa. Well, now it's mildly hot cocoa. So I've actually been tooling around here for a couple hours now, and um, it's cold. Uh, I've got a little little space heater, which does a little bit okay, but I don't know if you guys can see here in the back. Corrugated plastic for walls, not the best idea. I didn't build it, I inherited it, and so um, I get to deal with it. <laughs> Uh, eventually I will be replacing that with plywood and some insulation and I'm gonna make this a more livable shop. It'll be a lot better for me and anybody who I have out working here with me. But, I want to talk to you guys about a few things. First things first, the lathe update. So we got the new lathe out here in the shop and uh, you know I was telling you about the the headstock and the tailstock that didn't quite meet up so I've got both my headstock and tailstock lined up right now because I just got done taking pictures of it um, showing Rycon. I was in talks with their uh, one of their reps today telling them about how you know the the side to side is perfect you know I was able to loosen the headstock and align the side to side and they're great now um, but the up down I actually measured it with my calipers and the tailstock is down 0.8 millimeters which when I'm drilling the hole makes sense because the holes that I'm getting are in between like one and a half and two millimeters too wide when I drill through which is a problem for some blanks especially if you're drilling something like a Sierra blank you know a 2764 Sierra blank you drill that through and then you glue your tube in the wall thickness on that is extremely thin you only have like one millimeter uh, wall thickness and if you've got a 0.8 on top and 0.8 on bottom you're only got left 0.2 millimeters of product and so it's uh, it's been an issue that I've been working around and um, been using smaller drill bits in order to kind of to kind of work around that but you know I, I can't do that for everything I don't have you know drill bits that are just a little bit smaller for every kit that I have so it's been it's been a little bit of an issue so been in talks with them they said you know they if I if I got them the photos out and got the then my serial number then uh, they would just ship me a new tail stock so they didn't think they had them in stock and I told them it's not a problem I've already been working with it out of place uh, but you know this does need to be replaced because it's it's an issue an update on the uh, specters of the sky I, what, did I, what was I calling it skyscapes spectacles of the sky I, I think that's what I want to call it you know I don't know that everybody's just gonna automatically go skyscapes I know what that means that's a sky landscape that's something that you view upon in its infinite beauty and um, I think spectacles of the sky better defines what kind of blanks I'm going to be carrying in that category so and those were the solar eclipse the aurora borealis northern lights blanks the uh, coastal sunset blanks the winter sunrise blanks and, and a few others 
And so uh, we're going to be doing those, and I'm I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. Um, last week I actually realized that I forgot to show you one of the blanks. I had extra resin left over on purpose. I wanted to cast a bottle stopper blank out of it. I forgot to show you that last week. You guys I may have caught a glimpse of it as I moved it out of the way. Um, but uh, I didn't show you guys the bottle stopper blank. And the bottle stopper blank I'm actually the most excited about. Check that baby out. Look at how the ribbons of light and color cut through the black night sky. So you got all black on the bottom and you, those are some of the um, the flash white powder that I added to that. That's flash white in there. Uh, that's what those big specks are but all of the little, little specks are all over inside of the black and then um, look at the top there. Isn't that neat? You can actually see the sparkle, the twinkle of the flash white. I say twinkle because they're supposed to be emulating stars. So I don't want to say sparkle because stars don't sparkle. They twinkle. But you can see the twinkle in there and it's, it's really beautiful. And then you've got these ribbons that are cutting through and these look most like the uh, Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis that I'm going for. So really excited to turn that up. And um, I haven't decided exactly how I want to turn it up yet. I'm kind of thinking, usually when, when I do these, I'll drill the hole in the bottom here where, you know, you can see that it's square. But, uh, you know, the Aurora Borealis, it, it goes horizontally, you know, with the horizon, horizontally that way, yes. And um, so I'm kind of thinking that I need to drill the hole actually in the bottom flatten off the bottom so it'll be a pretty short bottle stopper I've been mulling it over I haven't decided yet either way it's gonna look pretty spectacular so really excited for that I wanted to show you guys that because I forgot to show you that last week and then um, if it's a success and you guys like it then maybe I'll have to do some uh, spectacles of the sky bottle stopper blanks too you know that'll be exciting so that'll be fun one of the other things that I'm testing out in the shop right now, I had a customer, uh, she just wanted a red pen, just straight red, she didn't want any pearl in it, she didn't want any um, silver powders or any mica powders, she, she just wanted a straight red blank. I said, well, fine, we can do that, yeah, that's easy. Well, a Lumalite red dye is translucent. And so I was like, well, we're going to have to paint the insides of the blank. She's like, just paint them red. I was like, well, we can paint them silver and give it some interest. She's like, nope, just paint it red. I just want it to be a plain red blank. And so I cast up just the red. I painted it red. It didn't quite look right. And so um, I went out in seek of something else. And what I found was, and I wish I brought the bottle out with me, um, I found Tap Plastics has their own line of professional pigments. And so I went to Tap Plastics, and they had a red professional pigment that, that they use for all of their resins and things. And it's opaque, and it looks fantastic, actually. I bought a, a jar of it. It was like four bucks. And there, it's, a, it's a bottle. Yeah, I don't have it out here. I don't know, it, it's probably about an ounce and a half or so of pigment, and it's like a paint almost like you I opened it up I pulled a little plug out of the inside stirred it up real good and it's like a liquid paint I just kind of scoop some out and let it blop down inside of the uh, inside of the resin and I stirred it in and then um, here's the blanks I'll show you the good faces here and so here's the blanks and they they're completely opaque there's no swirls there's no uh, purling in there there's no there's no nothing and it just they're plain. I mean, all you're seeing there is just that's glue from gluing it up because I've already got these, um, got barrels inside of these. This is going to be a barren pen. But uh, yeah, they look pretty spectacular. They look really good. Really happy with how those turned out. You can see there how shiny that face is. And um, it did take not a whole lot longer, but it did take a little bit longer to cure up and harden. Um, usually, about 24 hours is all that I need to do in order to pull out a blank and I wouldn't be able to dent it with my fingernail and uh, at 24 hours I pulled it out of the pressure pot and I was still able to dent it with my fingernail not much but it was enough that you could see it 
and it wasn't self-healing, like it wasn't pushing back out. I, I took it, and I've got a, a little um, wall-mounted uh, heater, electric heater, out in the family room. And so I just took it, and I just sat it on top of that little wall-mounted heater, and and it just it puts out just the slightest amount of heat, and not much, and it's not very hot. Um, but it's enough to, to heat the small room that it's in. And so I just sat it on top of that and came back a few hours later and it was hard enough that I, I couldn't indent it with my fingernail. So it, it, it cured up fine and it's got a really high luster to it, uh, really high gloss. And so I'm going to get those turned up tonight and then I'm going to be hopefully shipping these out tomorrow because this customer's waiting for these pens. Um, she ordered four pens and, and, uh, had an issue also with a, an olive wood piece actually. I'll show you that, I've got it right here. It took pictures of this and sent it to her. I was turning up an olive wood blank for her and when I had started I noticed that there was just just the smallest little crack. I mean it was it was tiny. It, I didn't think anything of it. I just filled it in with a little thin CA and it's like that's that's going to turn away. It's just right at the surface of the blank. Um, you could tell that it. I mean, the crack had just occurred just from uh, the drying period. And then uh, as I turned it, it actually got wider as you got down toward the bottom. So here's this piece of olive wood, and it's a gorgeous piece of olive wood. It's got a lot of really pretty features to it, um, but it's it's got that crack just right there. And so I sent her an image of it. I said, look. It's got this crack in it. It happened during the drying process. These things happen sometimes, but if you want, I'll redo it for free. Um, you know, but cracks in wood, you know, you fill them in, and and sometimes they're just like leather. Um, leather, when you have a scar through leather, it actually adds interest to it. And so she said, you know, I while I appreciate your thoughts. I'd like it redone because this is a pen I'm going to carry all the time and I'm worried about how it's going to stand up structurally. I understood and so I had another one turned up. I turned it up uh, last night, polished it up. I did tell her though, I was like, that's going to make your order a little late because I'm having to start it from scratch and she's like, that's fine. Um, so I do communicate with my customers on Etsy. If you guys have questions and some of you have actually contacted me on Etsy um, plenty of times and, and I, I talk with you guys. Hey. I'm pretty pretty open, pretty straightforward. I'm an honest guy, straight shooter, and uh, and you know, got no problems starting over from scratch. As long as you understand it, it's gonna be a little late. So, um, got the other one turned up, polished last night. Got to put it together. I've got this red one that I redid for her that I'm gonna turn up tonight, and we're gonna get these shipped out tomorrow for her. Man, it's cold. So my dad, who is also a pen turner, fellow wood turner. He's actually the one that taught me most of what I know about wood turning, and uh, him and I have actually we we haven't parted ways in our wood turning experience. Um, but you know, he does things a little differently, and I do things a little differently. Uh, he does CA finishes uh, on some of his pens, and I do them on almost all of my wood pens. Uh, he he doesn't like resin turning and I don't mind resin turning he doesn't like to deal with the mess and I don't mind the mess you know got a shop vac for a reason um, <laughs> but uh, so you know we've got some different theories on things but uh, um, you know we're always willing to help each other out and that's what I love about our relationship is that we're always there for each other um, he's a great guy and uh, I love him to death and he had a pen actually that he came to me and he's like hey I've got this pen Made it for a customer a long time ago. Customer didn't end up wanting it, um, and not for a fault of the pen, just because um, they lost contact, they lost touch. He didn't have an actual cell phone number. It was a guy that he saw every day at work, and then the guy wasn't working there anymore. And so he's gone and lost in the wind, and now he's got this pen that, you know, he, he just pulled out of his storage, and he's like, hey, I've got this pen. Would you mind selling it? So I'm going to be putting this up on my Etsy site. It comes with the box. Really nice walnut lift box. You can't hardly find these much anymore. And the lift box lifts the pen right up and out, so it's right there to grab onto. So I will set that to the side. And it's this gorgeous black with 24 karat gold uh, Junior Gentleman fountain pen. So this pen comes apart just like so. And there it is. All black acrylic fountain pen. 
a little dusty just from my hands just now, so sorry about that. I'll clean it off before I <laughs> mail it out. But 24 karat gold, premium nib, black fountain pen. I'll be throwing that up on my Etsy shop. I'm going to sell it for my dad. And then, uh, you know, if you guys want that, come on by. It comes with the nice walnut box. And it's even got a, a reservoir and everything inside. And so if you guys are interested in that, come on by the shop. I'll have that for sale up there. We're trying to sell that for my dad um, so he can get it out of his inventory. So I'll get you a close-up of the box there. So really beautiful walnut box. It's got wooden hinges. Metal pins through them. You can see the metal pins there on the end. Really pretty box. And then show you the lifting action there. Just raises that right up for you. And then sets it back down. Yeah, it's a really neat box. So if you guys haven't seen these, you know, these are these are really fun. So I'll be selling that on my Etsy site. Come on by and check it out. Got some things in the mail. Really excited for these. We've got a fishing pen. I've got a fly fishing pen that we're going to be doing up. And then i uh, got some more Sierra pens. I've got gun metal in stock. I put up my Sierra uh, pen kits up on my Etsy site. And I went, oh, I don't have any gun metal. I've got gold. I've got chrome. I've got black chrome. Don't have any gun metal. So I've got gun metal in stock. I'm going to be changing that tonight, fixing it. I've got two of them that are available. So if you guys want a gun metal Sierra pen kit in any of the woods or acrylics or resins that I'll do up for you, just go ahead and come by the shop, order those, and we'll get those going for you. Also in this bag, really excited for this, I actually found a second pen that I can convert into a G2 ink refill. Um, and so with that, I could probably also convert it into like the Pilot V5RT and some of the other ink refills that you guys really love. So I'm not going to announce the names. I had a guy last week, you know, he commented, he goes, hey, I missed the name. Did you announce the name of that uh, G2 conversion click pen that you're going to be doing? And I, I told him, no, I, I didn't announce the name. Um, I didn't want to jinx anything. I don't want to jinx anything. I'm leaving it out there. If it doesn't work, then I'll show you guys the video of it not working and how come. But I've got a second kit, a uh, different type of pen that uh, I think is going to work. There's more processes to it than the other one. Um, but uh, the processes are pretty simple. So I'm going to show the video to you guys when I'm, I'm ready to uh, fully announce that you know after I've done the turning and the polishing taking pictures of it and not fully tested it to make sure that it's going to function and work flawlessly um, I'll announce the names and I'll, I'll release a video on the how to's um, and they're they're simple and you guys could figure them out uh, but I don't want to get too far into it because I, I've noticed sometimes you get a little bad luck like if you if you release a concept you release an idea too soon you get too far into it too many details and you jinx yourself and so I, I try not to do that I keep things a little general and then uh, you, you don't jinx yourself because <laughs> that's the worst feeling like you get really excited you've told the world hey I can do this and then no you can't. <laughs> it's frustrating. So, uh, so I'm not going to release the names, but I've got two pen kits now that look promising to be able to do the G2 conversion. So look forward to those videos in the future. I live in the flight path. Wait for the jet to go by. So look forward for those videos to come out in the future because I We'll release them whether they fail or whether they work, and you guys will be able to see that coming up here uh, soon, hopefully. I've already got them drilled and glued and trued up, and I just need to get to turning them. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to turn these customers' pens, and then if I have time left, I'll turn these tonight. If not, uh, probably tomorrow. Okay, so special announcement too. I'm going to be actually closing the shop down for a little while in March. Uh, the reason for that is pretty exciting. Um, the bench that I've been working on has a brother which sits in the corner, uh, which is actually to my, my back right now. And so the brother I'm going to actually take, and this bench ends right here as you can see, and I've got just like a Lazy Susan 
TV uh, stand actually that's next to it. No TV on it, but I just, I've just kind of been using it as like a shelf. It's got a little storage underneath it, and so I'm going to get that out of the way. And then I've got another storage unit that's over here on the side. When we moved in, we we're like, oh, this storage unit's great. It's got shelves. I can put all my bins and stuff on it and store stuff there. And I'm going to move that out to the garage. I'm going to get this TV stand out of the way, and then I'm going to move the brother for this one. Um, over next to it so I have a one continuous bench that goes down this wall and then the corner the way that the this room is set up um, you know it's got a corner and both benches go up to each other's corner but that leaves this negative space that's up here in the in the top corner section that I haven't been able to do anything with stuff falls in there it's a pain in the rear to get to and so that once I get that negative space out I've got a large um, air compressor that I'm going to put in there um, on, with probably I'm going to build a rolling stand for uh, my shop vac and I've also got one of those um, vortex tunnel uh, thing attachments for the shop vac that goes into like a five gallon bucket that I'm going to probably make a little like rolling cart for that I saw on a video and if I can find it I'll link it uh, here in the cards and uh, so I'm probably going to set up something like that so I can keep things clean in the shop, I keep filters clean in my shop vac, and then the air compressor is going to be helpful for all, just, I mean, all around very helpful. I had a buddy of mine that donated it, he had a few extra air compressors that were sitting around, and he was very gracious, he thought of me and called me up and said, hey, I've got this spare air compressor, do you want it? And I said, absolutely, and so um, went and picked that up and, and surprised him when I was able to fit it into the trunk of my little car. And uh, people are always surprised exactly how much I can fit into the trunk of my little car. I drive a little uh, Chevy Cavalier uh, two-door, and the trunk in that thing goes very deep. And uh, it's, it's kind of wide, and so I have to angle things sometimes, but I'm, I always surprise people exactly how much I can fit in there. Actually, I, when my wife and I moved in together, I was able to move all of her stuff in one trip in my little car. All of her bins from her son and her and... Uh, all of her bins and boxes and all that stuff. I was able to fit it all in the trunk of my car, folded the seat down, put some in the back seat, stacked up. One trip. And people are always pretty amazed. It's, it's kind of like, like the Mary Poppins purse. It just keeps going. All right, well, that about wraps it up for this Shop Talk Tuesday. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, thank you so much for joining me out in the shop this week. I'm going to have another video coming out this Sunday. I'm working on making the uh, the video for the the test jewelry box that I did for the actual jewelry box that I had to make for the little girl that I showed you guys pictures of last week. So if you want to check that video out, go ahead and look up at the cards here on the top. I'll link for that right there. Thank you so much for joining me out in the shop for this Shop Talk Tuesday. This is Tactical Painter out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop, signing out.